What is the menace? What's up guys, sorry for the longer intro this time around, but it's been a while since I made a video, so I kind of wanted to go a little overboard and try and make something special for this Method 3.0 video. I'm not gonna waste too much more of your time, I wanna get right into it. So we're gonna go over the what, who, how, when, why, and what ifs of the SB Method 3.0. All the timestamps will be in the description first thing below the video, so if you wanna skip ahead or find anything, it's right there for you. To preface this video, I want to say a couple things. Uh, first off, it was not me who deemed this the SB method. It wasn't I wasn't the first one to call it that. Uh, subscribers and chat, and uh, especially Wesley, aka I suck at NBA 2K, was kind of the one that dubbed it that. So we're we're just rolling with it. Tried to address everything I could, uh, but if you have any questions or any suggestions of how to fix or substitute ideas, please comment or let me know on Twitter or even come by during a live stream, which we do nearly every day. Quick disclaimer, this is not cookie cutter success that will 100% work for everybody. Um, it requires perseverance, effort, patience, and as cliche as it sounds, it, it requires a bit of positivity. The angrier you get at the game, the more mistakes you're gonna make. If you do pay attention to these principles, you'll see that there's a lot of room for variation or possibly improvement. Uh, these are just the things that I've worked with and found the best chance for success. I'm not promising you guys will get Kevin McHale by the end of the week if you use this. I do, however, have a lot of confidence that once you understand the philosophy behind it and have put some effort into expanding your play styles, learning how to adapt to the various circumstances you'll be put into over the course of your 60 plus games, you will both improve overall at the game and hopefully enjoy the game a little more because of it. All that said, let's begin. All right, so we're going to get into what are the principles of the method. Um, so not a whole lot has changed from the method 1.0 video uh, that I put out when I got Paul Pierce in about a day and a half back in season one. One of the differences is that the overalls do seem to change. This is the exact same lineup. Um, all the bronzes, I mean, everything's in the exact same position using the same coach. Um, this one was Tom Thibodeau. Doesn't matter. But for some reason, this one on next gen or on PlayStation 5, which I'm calling current gen, is a 73 overall. Um, I'm pretty sure if you went back and checked it on PS4, it would be a 72, but that's not really the point. You want your teams overall to be a 72. The reason you want it to be a 72 is that of all the testing I've done, which is having overalls as low as 70 and as high as 76, a 72 seems to be the highest one that you can have and still match up with people that are bronze matching, which is when you have a full bronze lineup and try to match up with each other to quit out and give each other wins. Second most important thing, have five usable players. Um, the first iteration of this was when stick shooting was really good. So by stick shooting with JJ Barea, Lonnie Walker, Okoye, Ben Simmons, and even Mo Bamba, I could hit threes with all of these cards. As you can see, Mo Bamba from day one, 76 speed. This JJ Barea, 92 speed. Lonnie Walker, 85 speed. So these cards were all very, very, very important. The fourth and maybe the most important thing is to have a secondary playmaking forward. Um, you want to be able to run the offense through your point guard, but you also really want to have a secondary big guard that you can create your offense with. Lastly, and the biggest change to the 3.0 method are the heat check cards. You can add badges. Three badges to every heat check card, regardless of what their overall is. Now we're going to get into who to use. Definitely the biggest difference in, in the method 3.0. As seen in the in the video intro, I like to use De'Aaron Fox's heat check card. Uh, he has speed, slashing, length, he can play defense, he has really good passing. He starts with a lot of badges, and just for fun, I threw on some extra ones to make him a little bit better. 
and uh, it's it's a big difference maker. He's a fantastic point guard. You can substitute him with other cards. Uh, if I do this, you'll see right now it's a 73 because his heat check is putting him up to an 88. But if we switch him out with, say, Trey Young as a ruby, it takes the overall back down to a 72. And we go back into the confines of the method. Now, that's a rare case where the only reason that he's he's affecting the overall so much is because now he's an 88. Uh, earlier in the year when Lonnie and I think it might have been Jeremy Grant, when they were both on fire, it didn't change the overall from the 72. So it has a very minor effect on your team's overall. But with the Aaron Fox basically being a high tier ruby, defensive stats going up by 11, he's just a really good card right now. At shooting guard, I'm using Matt Thomas. He's 6'4". He's not particularly fast, but he has an 85 three ball. He has 62 speed, which isn't horrible. But the big thing with him is he already comes with catch and shoot, corner specialist blinders, set shooter, and I put on hot zone hunter because he has hot zones almost everywhere outside the three. This guy's a sniper. He has a very easy release. You can hit on the move. And for a 74 overall card, he's a legitimate shooter. If you want to go nuts with him, you could add a uh, range extender or, you know, some other shooting badges and really make this card amazing. For my small forward, I'm using Lonnie Walker. He has 90 speed, 89 acceleration. So I threw on quick first step to gold. Now this card is fantastic on defense. He has maybe one of my favorite releases in the game. And if you can see by just the stats here, these are only games that finished, but he was averaging 16 points, three rebounds, three assists, and to steal a game. If they end up making like a pink diamond Lonnie Walker card, he might end up being one of my favorite cards in 2K. My power forward is my playmaking big guy. He's 6'10", has a great wingspan. And the weird thing is the main reason that I like using this Michael Porter Jr. card is his defense. He blocks shots like crazy. He rebounds really well. And his release is so easy. He has an 82 three ball, a 77 driving dunk, and 77 speed, 74 speed with ball. He's a way better alternative to the Ben Simmons card from Method 1. Starting center, you guys must already know who it is. It's Mo Bamba, the 76 three ball. His release for me is pretty easy. Um, he has an 80 speed. He is the fastest center aside from Sean Kemp under a diamond. So that's why I use him. Speed kills and he's seven feet with a 710 wingspan. So why not use him? Went a little crazy on this one. I badged him out, gave him gold catch and shoot, gold intimidator, rebound chaser, and rise up. This card is incredible. For me, has averaged 14 points and about 11 rebounds and two steals and two blocks. Card's really good. So this is the current method lineup that I used to get Mikhail. Um, there are definitely little tweaks that you can make. Obviously right now, like I said, it's a 73 overall. So if you can throw in other cards, it would be good. If you wanted to, you could use Dennis Schroeder right now, who has an 89 three ball, not a great driving dunk, ball handle of 95 and speed of 80. So he's definitely not a bad option. And then just really quickly, some alternatives that you could consider if you wanted to. Sapphire Cole Anthony. I also recommend trying Jeremy Grant, uh, the Emerald Peja, Emerald Thought Maker, the RJ Barrett and Obi Toppin duo, uh, Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr., the 21 current series, and the Jaw and Junior Varsity, aka Jonas Valanciunas. Now we're getting into how to use this lineup properly. One big thing, go into freestyle, practice with your releases, figure out where your players' hot zones are, and understand how to use them and like what kind of animations you can expect to get with them. Going through them all, you want to make sure that you know where your players are going to be most effective. Michael Porter Jr., he's going to spot up in the left corner more often than not. So if I know I can get him there, I know I'm more likely to hit shots with him. Another big part of this is using cards that you're comfortable with. Just because I use these cards doesn't mean you're going to love their releases or their animation. Figure out what is going to fit best for you. I recommend starting with the cards that I suggest. And then if there's any that you have any real problems with or you just think another card would fit your style better, absolutely try them out and see what happens. If you want to badge up a heat check, Trey Young or whatever, I don't recommend it, but do what's going to be most comfortable for you. Don't listen to what other people are telling you is the best card. Figure out who you like using. A big part of this is when you're putting the bronzes on your bench, because this is a five man lineup, you want to go with the cards that are worst on defense. That allows you 
to basically put better players in your starting lineup. So all of the bronzes that I use have an F in at least one of perimeter or post defense, and usually low rebounding. No matter who I have in, say if we put in Trey Young here, it puts my defense down to a 69 overall, which means nice. our offense is a 76. Yeah, Trey Young makes the team that much worse on defense. But that's just because right now De'Aaron Fox is on fire and his defense is crazy. For those of you that use playbooks, I, I just have the Pistons one on. I never really used it. I never really used the uh, quick through STS last year. I got Mikhail Iguodala, Ewing, Pierce. I did all of that without calling a single play, running a set freelance, or using any specific defensive settings. If you're comfortable with that and you think it'll help you, tinker around to the settings and figure out what works best for you. But absolutely, like, this is as starter, beginner friendly as possible. Don't worry about it. Something to consider when you're doing this lineup is literally when you're doing this lineup. Late night or early morning is the best way to maximize your chances of running into people that are trying to do the bronze matching. There will be less people uh, searching on the matchmaking, and therefore you'll have a higher chance of running into the lower overall people that are playing. Sorry to any Brazilians that may be watching this, but they're two hours ahead of Eastern time. 6 a.m. Eastern, that's when Brazilian players are playing around 8 a.m. and they don't have their own servers, so they have to play on a serious lag discrepancy. It sucks, but unfortunately, that is kind of a way to exploit the matchmaking in 2K. And uh, it it just kind of works. That's the one part of it I don't feel great about, but aside from that, I, I have zero qualms using this lineup. When you know other people are trying to match, you can use matchup buffering to maximize your wins. So if you know other people are trying this method out, uh, you can use it and match up with friends. But the key is that you have a team that if you don't match up with who you're attempting to, you still have a good chance of winning the games. Towards the very end of my run, I ended up matching up with LTK Reaper, I think for three wins. Uh, but it was literally just because I was taking five or six minutes in the matchmaking search to find it. It was very early in the morning. Um, otherwise, I have zero... Uh, doubt in myself to be able to win all the games that I would have needed to. Another really important thing to do is to play when key players on your heat checks have boosted stats. The bulk of my run was done with a on fire Lonnie Walker and he was averaging about 25 points a game. So here's one where Lonnie actually wasn't my best player but instead it was Michael Porter Jr. who had a crazy stat line. If you look at the shooting percentages you'll see that I'm taking very efficient shots. This happened to be in a game where I matched up against a guy who was using a Pink Diamond Larry Bird. But unfortunately, because he could only really run his offense through Larry Bird, all we had to do was stop one guy. Uh, this is funny because I actually played this guy multiple times and he ended up throwing in the Lonnie Walker um, in his starters after seeing me use him. The game before that we played this guy, I do actually have the screenshots and Lonnie Walker had 39 points and six steals against him. His Larry Bird had 63 points, he won the game. If you guys want to see more of Method Squad gameplay, I can absolutely put out another video for that, just let me know. So as, again, as far as the when, it's late night or early morning, maximize your chance of matching up with Brazilian players and other people that are trying to bronze match. Um, play when key heat check players are boosted, but your overall is still low enough. And basically play late at night on lower traffic days, so Sunday through Wednesday or early on weekends. Now we're going to get into why use the method lineup. Um, for me, it's pretty simple. Uh, I genuinely enjoy using it more than when I play with my God Squad. There, there's a lot of five out pick and roll spam fatigue where I'm just annoyed at going against the same thing every game. And I'd rather just use five players that all kind of have their role, can all do like a little bit of what I need them to do. But, you know, I just really like playing a team basketball. It's it's a little more sim style, but it's so much more fun. Uh, the second reason why to do it is it teaches you how to use five players. I play a lot of people who only really know how to score with one or maybe two players on their teams, and that goes for God Squads as well. It just really unlocks your potential as a player, in my opinion. Um, I feel way better at the game, and like I can beat a lot of people because I've, I've played against substantially better teams using the method lineup, and I mean, I gave away two wins in the Opal tier to people that, that messaged me and said, hey, I need, you know, I'm, I'm this close to Mikhail or whatever. So I was like, all right, quit out. I already have him. Realistically, having a 90 plus win percentage using a low overall team, 
I feel very confident in my own playing ability. So now when I do go and use my God Squad, it's I very rarely have any close games anymore. That's not to say I'm I'm necessarily good at the game. Maybe it's just matchups. Maybe it's whatever. But I do think that it has made me fundamentally better at the game. Which is the third point where playing with this lineup helps you understand different fundamental aspects of the game, passing lanes, um, when to use pick and rolls, when to switch on defense, how to control a guard, a forward, and a big. Um, it just gives you a better understanding of what to do. And probably the biggest reason, and uh, a lot of a lot of you guys are probably watching this video still for this very reason, it's a lot less stress. This year, it's a lot of wins you need to get these cards. And I just have more fun, and I'm less worried the whole time. I haven't been gripping the edge of my seat and raging and stressing out, um, at least nearly as much as I used to when I played... Uh, you know, the leaderboards or the 12-0 runs with my god squads, so... Just general enjoyment of the game. Um, another good reason is that most games never make it past the first quarter. Uh, if you're if you're really playing against someone that doesn't know what they're doing with a bunch of bronze cards, they're just gonna quit out. If you're playing against people that are trying to match up with each other to boost wins, they're gonna quit out. Easily less than half went past halftime. Um, you're much more likely to run into bots uh, if you use a low overall, which is time-consuming, but they're free wins. All right, so now I want to get into the buts or the what-ifs. So, so one of the most important questions is, what if you run into a budget lineup uh, like this one on screen that I did run into? That's probably your worst-case scenario, but if you play through, you'll, you'll kind of see that, especially on the newer generation of consoles, you can still beat a team like this with the method lineup as long as you know your players' releases and where to be in what situation. It'll be tough, but these matchups are extremely rare, and a lot of times players that are using these teams aren't necessarily the best, but a team like this could is going to be the most stressful thing you run into. Another question is, what if you match up with one or two god tier cards? So I ended up having a couple games where I ran into Opal Chris Webber, Opal Dwayne Wade, um, Grant Hill, cards like that. And there's a couple very simple ways to counter that. Uh, number one, draw charges. They want to run pick and roll spam. Get your big guy, bring him up, and just hold circle or whatever it is on Xbox and draw charges. Try and get fouls on them. If you can get enough fouls on their, their only usable player, they're going to foul out and then they're screwed. Force fouls on the AI. So if they off ball and let their good player guard you, pump fake, jump into them, again, draw fouls. One of the e easier way to counter it is figure out who their worst shooter is and use the player that would normally be guarding them and just press. So make it difficult, take seconds off the clock, make them not able to get the shots that they want. Uh, the most important thing is that chances are they don't know how to use their bad players. One of the most important things is take away threes at all costs and leave Mobamba to protect the rim. Get used to icon switching. It's going to be very important, but as long as you make them take a two-pointer every time, that's at least going to most likely be contested, you can probably score every possession. So if they want to run up the score with the method lineup, you're most likely going to be in a fine position anyway. The biggest thing is don't stress. But isn't this cheese? It absolutely could be called cheesing. Um, for me, it's the most ethical cheese out there, if it makes sense. Uh, it forces you to use five players. Yes, it's overall cheesing, but you're still using low tier cards and relying on matchmaking. Uh, the only teams you have an unfair advantage over are people with one great card and all bronzes, or people with bronze teams that are just trying to match with each other, in which case they're doing something I'd consider cheesier. Is it kind of lesser of a few evils? Maybe. Um, but it's also more fun than watching people curry slide behind a pick and roll for 70 hours straight. It still relies on your ability and using the matchmaking system to your advantage. It's a little bit of an exploitation, sure, but uh, overall, I don't really consider it cheesy. If you do, absolutely, I will not argue. But what if I'm not good enough? Practice. 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 Uh, go to shoot around, play games without expecting to win, and just learn how to use the cards together in early, especially in early tiers, where if you lose, it's not as um, as big of a disadvantage. Uh, you know, like coming up against real competition for the first time in Pink Diamond or Opal, you're going to be way more stressed out than if you're in Emerald or Sapphire. You can lose a couple games there, 
and it's not a huge deal. If you have to use a couple throwaway games to get used to using the team, I'd say it's worth it because their releases online are going to be different than they are offline. So you have to get used to that. And lastly, but what if somebody else told me that blank is the best way to play? Again, I'm not telling you that this will 100% work for everybody, but at the very least, it will put you in a better position to win more games, match up for easier wins, and overall improve your ability to play the game. I included a couple screenshots at the very beginning of this video showing um, a friend of mine that was 44 and 40, uh, I believe last season, and the highest they got was Sapphire tier. This year, they're comfortably in the pink diamond tier. All they did is switch from using their best team to using the method team. And they've told me that they've had more fun playing online with it. For me, that's the most important thing. This is a video game. It's supposed to be fun. I'm a very competitive person, absolutely. I have no problem going up against anyone's God Squad with my best team. I think those are fun games too. But I like the idea of using a real team and playing against other players who are trying to do the same. I just think that it is the best way I've found to help players of all different budgets, um, skills, and play styles to basically have the most uniform way of having everybody succeed. Uh, sorry about the long video. I just wanted to be as detailed as possible. Uh, make sure that everyone has the best opportunity to use this successfully. If you guys have any suggestions or questions, definitely feel free to ask me either in the comments of this video or on Twitter or any other way of reaching me. Um, we are going to be live streaming every day, so definitely come through and say what's up. Uh, ask any questions in real time if you'd like. And thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.